hello everyone so today we'll be starting with another topic from the indian society series and today's topic is secularism now secularism is a very important topic and in a gs1 exam uh, many questions have been repeated from this topic in fact in uh, 2018 mains a question about difference between indian and western concept of secularism was repeated from 2014 so this is quite an important topic and you should know what the, the secularism is all about and what are its origin and what is the difference between the indian concept and the western concept one by one we will cover all of these topic now firstly the definition of secularism and the secularism is basically an ideology it stands for separation between state and religion i have repeated before also that uh, whenever there is a, uh, a suffix of ism it means an ideology even it's if it is communalism or fundamentalism it is a kind of ideology for so this ideology of secularism stands for separation between state and religion it is kind of uh, you know a wall between two of the important institutions of the society now what is the origin of this concept of secularism so secularism as a concept originated in the west now so we have to see certain circumstances which you know led to formation of these concept that okay the church and the state will be separated from each other now in uh, middle ages uh, to right up to the 17th century there was a major struggle between roman catholic church and you know the state as an institution for supremacy this resulted in a church versus state controversy and also there is an important thing that um, uh, around uh, say early 17th century from there for almost 30 years there was a war known as european war of religion it was basically between the roman catholic church and the newly emerging uh, church uh, or the sects uh, originating from the roman catholic church like the protestantism and this war took around 30 years and it be, uh, ended in a treaty treaty of westphalia now in these treaty there were certain you know points about how such wars based on religion can be avoided how the supremacy of the religion or the church can be ended so these uh, two uh, incidences in the history led to the origin of secularism and this uh, treaty basically over time grew into a principle of political order and other writers also wrote on this and ultimately uh, it became an ideology which enunciated the separation between the state and the church so you can see the origin uh, of secularism in west was due to the war of supremacy between the church and the state plus a common religious war which were be fought for supremacy uh, now if we talk about india it is obvious that one cannot draw any direct lesson from the western experience because india never had a church or a very powerful organized state even if we see in our ancient times the maurya or the mughal empires they were uh, the some of the few empires which almost uh, consolidated the whole of the indian mainland but they were uh, these two were only episodic and it was not uh, where, uh, they didn't have any continuous presence in india so the idea of clash between church and state is alien was you know alien to the indian civilization so the question arises how the secularism came to being in our society indian society so let's find out now indians came across the concept of secularism in 19th century as a result of british rule and there was advent of uh, you know the western education so obviously the new ideas of not only these secularism modern political order communism they were uh, spread in the western educated indians and it was basically limited to the urban areas and if we see the word secular in political sense it was used 
after the formation of Indian National Congress in 1885. And the word secular and the word secular in political uh, terminology in India came to be used in pluralistic setting and not in the Western sense that it indicated indifference to religion. And uh, so basically it is not as a result of war between any two religion or war between the religion or the state. It mainly originated because uh, to allay the apprehension of the religious minorities to glue together the various uh, individuals which are emerging for different religions, to glue them together for the Indian national movement. So secularism in India, you can see uh, from the start has a very different connotation uh, and it related more to the community and secular interest rather than religion and its authority. So it's clear the origin of both Indian and the Western concept of secularism are entirely different even though the principal as such is the same. Now let's talk about secularism and Indian national movement. How during the Indian national movement this particular ideology of secularism came into being and it was popularized. Okay. Now the leadership of our freedom struggle uh, had to devise a principle you know that would be I have talked earlier also the, a kind of principle that would be able to hold the people together because ours was a heterogeneous society. Many religion were there and many people from different cultures were there. So to have a sense of tolerance and acceptance among them, this ideology was popularized. And uh, this was a kind of holding mechanism. And now the also the nationalist leaders realized that, you know, they had to fight two enemies uh, simultaneously. One was obviously the British imperialist power, other was communalism within India. Now to counter this uh, sense of what is uh, communalism, now what is communalism? It is basically an ideology which believes that people belonging to different religions not only have different uh, religious uh, ideas but also their secular ideas are different as well as antagonistic to each other. Now we'll study these concepts of communalism in detail in our uh, next video. But for now you can know that the, the genesis of this concept of secularism was mainly to counter the communalism or mistrust or any kind of divide between people of different faiths because they had to come together for the Indian national movement. Now we have discussed about the origin uh, of the secularism in the West as well as in India. In West it was due to the church versus, versus state war but in India it was to glue together the people for the Indian national movement. Now let's see what's the difference between the Indian and the Western concept of secularism. Now the Indian concept of secularism we have seen that it originated as in a pluralistic setting. It was mainly to you know counter communalism and it was not uh, opposition to the religion. Uh, it was uh, basically to uh, allay any kind of fear or distrust of, uh, between different individuals who were following different faiths or religion. Now whereas in the Europe or in the West, uh, it was the where European society was mono-religious. Christianity was the main religion and secularism was not opposite to communalism as it was a mono-religious society. It was due to the fact that they were a war of supremacy between state and church. So they had to be separated. So this ideology came into being. There was a strict wall of separation between religion and the church. Now, uh, moving forward with this strict wall of separation, if we see the Indian concept of secularism, it stands for equal distance from the religion, whereas the Western concept is indifference to the religion. Okay, so in D.D. Basu, there is one line that uh, Indian secularism is kind that there is a wall between state and uh, uh, religion, but from the side of uh, the state, there are some windows through which it can intervene. We'll see in the next point what this means. Now, the Indian concept of secularism, it is 
कंपेटेबल विद स्टेट स्पॉन्सर्ड रिफॉर्म्स फॉर एग्जाम्पल रिमूवल ऑफ अनटचेबिलिटी अपलिफ्टमेंट ऑफ वुमेन इन द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन इट सेल्फ इट इज रिटर्न दैट यू नो द स्टेट कैन ओपन द पब्लिक प्लेसेज और एनी यूज ऑफ वेल्स विच हैज बीन अर्लियर डिनाइड टू द लोअर कास्ट सो इट इज कंपेटेबल विद स्टेट स्पॉन्सर्ड रिफॉर्म्स Now, if we see the Western concept, it is not compatible with the states sponsored. The wall of separation is very strict. There should be no interference. For example, if the church prescribes that the head would be male, it is it will be only male, and there will be no interference from the state. But we have seen in the Indian concept, it is open to the idea of introducing reforms. And uh, right now, we have seen in the case of Sabri Mala. Uh, earlier uh, the women the of menstruating age were not allowed but now supreme court has given a judgment that you know it is against the gender equality and uh, the females are also free to profess their religion and faith so our concept of secularism allows such kind of reforms which are being sponsored by the state and lastly our concept in the indian concept of secularism it is closely related to the protection of minorities and positive discrimination this kind of provision is are provided in our constitution itself and uh, there is a, a protection given to minorities which is uh, explicitly given in article 29 and 30 so it's entirely different form if you see in the functional form our concept is entirely different from the western concept even though the main uh, idea of the or the main ideology is same but still in practice it is quite different okay so this was the difference between the indian concept and the western concept this is very important and uh, this uh, you can get an answer or uh, you can get a question from it in gs1 and uh, also uh, it will be very useful in the essay paper if something comes about you know the any kind of intolerance or uh, for the matter of fact on secularism if a topic comes you can use this this will provide richness to the content okay now uh, i'll just added some of the polit uh, the secularism from the polity point of view what does our constitution says about secularism how implicitly or explicitly it talks about secularism now secularism in indian constitution is connoted by uh, the thing that state doesn't have a religion and then the public revenues are not allowed to be used to promote any religion then article 25 second clause Says that state has the power to regulate any economic, financial, or secular activity associated with religious practice. So this is the thing we talked about: state-sponsored reform. So it is given in the Article 25. Then also on Article 25, Clause 2, Part B, it is written that the state shall have the power to, uh, through the law, to provide the social reform. or throwing opening of the hindu religious institution of public character to all classes and sections of hindu so these are some points which uh, are laying the foundation of the indian concept of secularism now article 17 where it abolishes the untouchability and then we have freedom of conscience uh, and then next every individual person will have in that order an equal right of freedom of conscience and religion and uh, next uh, uh, the these rights are you know explicitly gives the idea of secularism or includes it in our constitution and the preamble also states that you know ours is a secular country so this is the relation of the constitution with the idea of secularism now so if we have to talk about in conclusion about secularism the concept of secularism which emerged in india it, it can be seen through three substantial components the state would not attach itself to any one religion and therefore there is no state religion for example like pakistan it has uh, islam as its state religion but india doesn't have any state religion and all citizens have the freedom of religious beliefs it is also 
given in our constitution in article 25 26 it's given explicitly that india is a secular nation in the preamble and from time to time judiciary has been giving wonderful judgments which have you know reiterated this important principle of our democracy and uh, lastly the state would ensure the equality among the religious groups by ensuring that one group was not favored at the expense of other and correspondingly there is provision of protection of minority so this was all about the concept of secularism uh, and we'll quickly cover this one topic because uh, secularism as a topic has been asked two or three times so there's a very less chance that again it would be asked but there is an attached topic to secularism and we'll just quickly cover in one slide it is known as secularization now we studied about secularism it is an ideology now what is secularization secularization is basically the process through which the religious institution the religious conceptions understanding they lose control in the secular or the worldly matters mainly the or in the economy polity justice health family and so on for example uh, if uh, you know uh, with relation to polity uh, if uh, there used to be any provision that okay the kshatriyas would rule now that is not possible we have a modern democratic society and the process through which we moved from you know the ancient polity to the modern this process is the secularization the religion is being uh, separated from these secular affairs okay now instead there emerged empirical and rational procedures and conceptions about world in the general so this thing the process through which we you know follow the ideology of secularism is secularization it's a process now it's a process where various institutions gradually become distinct from one another increasingly free from the matrix of religious assumption that had earlier informed inspired and dominated their operation so this was a small topic about secularization and i'm sure the sociology students must be aware of this and uh, this is a very important topic for the sociology student but as a non sociology student you have to write the gs answer also so this topic you should know it is a kind of connected topic with secularism and uh, this is a homework go back and search for you know some examples related to economy how the secularization process came into being in with respect to economy polity justice health and family so this can be a question or they can be question uh, uh, where you know you can be asked differentiate between secularism and secularization so we covered both the concept uh, you can make a tabular form about the origin of the process and what is the difference between both of them so this is all for today's lecture and uh, in the next video we will be continuing with the next topic that is communalism it's an important topic and uh, every now and then uh, in changed form questions are asked from this uh, uh, term of communalism and it is also very important with respect to essay also and uh, we'll cover next time please do like comment and sh share and also subscribe to our channel thank you thank you very much